<coughs> Manuel Cabral. Hi, everyone. So uh, I'll be presenting Marty Pano, which is a new viewer for uh, 360 images and video that we've developed. So I'll just start by telling you a bit about my company. So I'm the co-founder of Vigisfera, and we specialize in creating web applications with 360 content, so 360 images and videos. We, uh, we have like the projects where we do the photography and design and development, but we also work with a lot of panoramic photographers and companies, providing them with design and development services. So a lot of our projects are like uh, virtual tours. This is really the most common. But we also do a, a lot of tagging projects. We have this panel tag system, which lets people tag themselves on gigapixel images and then share on Facebook and so. And sometimes we also do custom tagging systems for people. So like people who want to be able to have an application where their clients can put tags, maybe for collaborative work or stuff like that. Every once in a while there is a game project, usually these are like treasure hunt games. So you have a gigapixel or a virtual tour with stuff hidden on them, and then the players have to find different objects to be able to win some prize. And sometimes there are also other kinds of applications. This was one we did where you had these uh, 360 images with, with an outdoor on them, and people could actually upload a photo and the photo would appear on the outdoor, and then they could share a link to their friends with their, with their photo on these big outdoors. So one of the latest projects we worked on was uh, Dubai 360. I'm sure uh, most of you know about it. And uh, it was a really good project to work on. It was really cool. And our role there was to uh, design and develop the front-end interface that, uh, that you see when you, go, when you go on the website. All right. So moving on to oh, so moving on to uh, Marzi Pedal. I mean, over the years we have been developing these uh, these projects with uh, 360 content, and over the past couple of years our development process so, uh, has really moved a lot. Saying, we started using, using more just like HTML, HTML, CSS, and CSS, and JavaScript, JavaScript, and using and the viewer is just almost just like on the background to display the content, and. We couldn't really, I mean, there wasn't really a viewer that we were completely happy that worked as we wanted with, uh, when you are doing things this kind of way. And I mean, nowadays, this is how most people are doing things, really, just using standard HTML and CSS for the interface and uh, using the viewer just uh, like as a background. And so what we did is that we developed our own, and uh, it's called Maxi Panel. Uh, we also wanted it to uh, wanted to have a bit more control over how the viewer works, and to have something which we could extend with our features. Because sometimes on some projects we felt a bit limited with that. And also we wanted something which could be uh, which could work well with the web development tools we would use nowadays. And Marzi Panel does that, and of course it uh, supports all major browsers and, and devices. So I'll be talking about two things. So one of them is the Marzi Panel Viewer, and this is just a JavaScript library which uh, can be used to view 360 media on, on the web. And then I'll talk about the Marzi Panel tool, which is something we made so that it would be easier to use the viewer. And this is an application which runs on the browser and lets you create a simple virtual tour. So I'll start by talking about the tool and then I'll go into some more details of the viewer works. So to use the Marzipano tool, you just need to go on the website. It's called marzipano.net. And you have here a link for the tool. I've already loaded it since uh, there's no Wi-Fi. But when you go there, you get this. So when you are publishing panoramas to be viewed on the web, usually you need to convert them from this exact rectangular projection into a cubic projection. And also do the multi-resolution thing with the tiles. And this is what, uh, what this tool does. And also it lets you customize the, the tour a little bit. 
So you have this introduction screen, and then you get a screen to add your panoramas. So I will add a couple here. So once you have your panoramas, then the tool starts uh, processing them. So now it's loading the images, loading and decoding, and then it will start generating the tiles for these images. Well, it hasn't generated them still, then you just get this uh, preview. Yeah, no, they are coming. But now it's generating the tiles for all the different levels so that then this can be published on, on the web. So when, while this is being done, you can uh, start like working on the tour. One of the things you can do is that you can change its uh, name. So I'll just example tour. <coughs> you also have some options. So the first option is whether you want drag mode or QTBR. This is always a hot topic, so we went to drag this. You can enable or disable auto-rotate. If you want, you can add some buttons to control the view, and also a full screen button. So basically, when, when the tour is done, you can get a zip archive, which contains all the tours, all the tour files. And here you can see like, how it will look like. So I'll just enable it. So one important thing to know here is that uh, this is not like uploading the panoramas to a web server and it's being processed on the web server and then you download it. This is just like as if it were a desktop tool, except that it's running on the browser. So I'm actually offline now. So this is all being done locally. The only difference is that it runs on the browser rather than being something that you download and, and install. So there are these different panoramas here, and uh, how they are, uh, the tiles are being generated. Now it's probably generating the, <coughs> the top part. And so there are also some uh, things that you can do for each panorama. You can change the panorama name, so you can call this one just street or something like that. Now you can also uh, set the initial view, so the view in which you want it to start. So you can make it point there, for instance. You can also add hotspots to other panoramas. So for instance, there is the second one, which you can't really see because it hasn't started processing yet. But you could already add a hotspot to go there. So you just click on the link hotspot button, and you just select where it should go. Let's say the second one. And now you can just drag it wherever, wherever you want to place it. And you can also rotate it, actually, if you want. Um, another feature we added recently was uh, information hotspots. So this is with this info hotspot button. So it's very similar. You just drag it wherever you want it. And now you can just say, yeah, this is a window. just added the text that you want to appear, and, it's not, and then the, the tool just disappears when you move the, the mouse over. So in the meantime, this first panorama has finished processing, and the second one has started, so now you can already see the full image almost. So the third one has started. You can also like uh, reorder the panorama, so if you want the, this one to be the second one and this one to be the third one, you can just drag and drop it here. And so that's how it works. I think I will actually cancel this one so we don't have to wait for it to finish. So you can also remove them like this, or you could add more panoramas if you wanted. So once, the, once this is done, like once all the panoramas have processed and you've added all the hotspots and all the scenes, you can get the, the tour files. And this you do by just clicking this export button. And what this does it has, is that it will generate the zip archive on the browser containing all the files of the tour. So you just click here, and it has downloaded. I mean, it's actually not downloaded the file because uh, this is not on a server. It has been just generated on the browser. But yeah, you have all the files here. So now you just need to take the zip file and extract it. And you have your like a README with some instructions. Then there is this app files directory, 
where you have all the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS code of the tour, and also the images. So we will here there will be the, there will be one of the cube places. So there are the files for all the levels and so. So now you could just take these files and upload them to FTP, to your website, or to Amazon S3, and the, the virtual tour would then be, be online. But actually, usually you want to preview it first on your computer to see what it looks like. But uh, there is an issue, I don't know if you have had this before, which is that when you, if you try to open an HTML file directly from your file system, there are some things which do not work on the browser. And the way to go around it is that you have to set up a web server to open the virtual tour locally, and this can be a bit of work. So what we have done is that on this zip file that, is, that you get, we have included a simple web server, which is just one file. It has a Windows and a Mac version. So actually, you just need to open this. And this will run the web server and show you the tour. So the web server is just running on this window. I mean, you don't have to worry about this. Just close it when you don't need to view it anymore. And here you have the tour which, uh, which you have just created. So you can switch between panoramas here on the left. We have these controls like we, like we checked there. Full screen button. Can enable and disable the auto rotate. And there are these hotspots also. So the hotspots which go to another scene, when you hover them, it shows you these tooltips saying where it's going. And when you click it, it changes the scene. And the information hotspots just uh, show you the title when you hover, and then when you click, it shows you the rest of the information with this cool CSS effect. And so this is it. I mean, now you could either take these files and put them on your website, and you would have like a simple virtual tour. Or you could take the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code and change the colors, or change the layout, or add more features. But you could do all of these using just like standard uh, web languages. So that's how the tool works. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to, to ask. Yeah, I mean, you have all the, all the CSS code is included. Uh, out of the tool. Well, the thing is, this tool isn't meant to be a very, very complex uh, tour for creating virtual tours, you know? It's not meant to be something like Pano Tour or like the Pano to VR. It's really meant to be just something very simple which gives you a budget from which you can work. I mean, what we are hoping is that uh, people will build tools using Marzi Pano which then allow you to do more things. But what we want here is really to have something very simple which just gives you a buzz and then you just use regular HTML and CSS code. Yep. Anyone else? Can you embed uh, just uh, inside a page instead of having the entire page with the panel on it? Uh, you mean embedding the tour inside another page? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is just HTML code. You just uh, need to put it there. Come on. Do I understand that right? That all the tiling from the original uh, image is done in the browser? Yeah, with JavaScript. Um, did you check out uh, where are the performance limits? How big can these images be? Depends it on the RAM of the uh, of the computer or the type of the browser or the RAM management? Yeah, what there are that? some limitations actually. Uh, well, this might be a bit technical now. It's so like to do this kind of stuff fast on the browser, you need to use something which are typed arrays, which is something which works much faster. But like. This is a very recent thing in browsers, and there are still some limitations. So there is a maximum image size. I think it's like around 22,000 by 11,000 accurate rectangular or so. And that's the maximum image size you can use. And in terms of speed, it's like uh, maybe four or five times slower on the browser than running it on your desktop. But I mean, for this kind of image, usually that's not a big problem, because while it's processing, you can do your tour stuff. 
the thing is, this is really recent stuff, and uh, like with every new browser version, sometimes there are performance improvements. And so I think as browsers improve in the next month, the performance of the tool will improve also. We have a question over here. Sorry. Uh, are you going to support like um, VR headsets or anything soon, or like uh, cardboard or something? So you can do a double. Sorry, what do you are you going to support cardboard uh, viewers and stuff in the in the J JavaScript? Does that make sense? So you can view. split the piece so it will view normally the VR. Ah, doing like the split screen thing? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we don't have that feature on the tool, but I will talk about it a bit later when I talk about the viewer itself. So the tool, as I said, it's very simple and doesn't have this feature yet. But maybe uh, sometime. Over here. Do you have any plans to include a street view on, the, on that? And uh, is that going to have any cost in the future? Uh, the thing is, like, if you are using street view, you don't really need to use our viewer because street view already has their own viewer. And if you are using the street view API, I think when you embed an image, it's already interactive. And then you can already create your application over your interface over it using the regular code. So I mean, the main thing for this tool is really processing the panoramas and getting them ready to be published. OK, so maybe I'll move on and talk a bit about the viewer. So, so basically, the tool generates a basic tour application, which you can then customize using just standard HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And this is following one of the design principles that we have when developing this viewer, which is to really embrace standard web technologies. All right. Why is that there? So, yeah, that was still just like half of the presentation. That's why I was asking Luke for more time earlier. <laughs> so, if you are already bored, <laughs> sorry. Okay. So the viewer supports different kind of media. So it supports cubic images, supports multi-resolution cubic images. So uh, here we have Jeffrey Martin's Gigapixel of Prague, which is uh, quite appropriate. So it also supports flat images, like gigapixels. This kind of thing I've mean, all seen before. It also can also show rectangular rectangular images so you can render them directly. So like if you have an image in this projection, if you are on a modern browser, you can actually render it directly on the viewer. It's not very impressive. It looks like a cubic image. But, but the main use case for rectangular images is actually like to be able to also render rectangular videos. And the support for video is still a bit uh, experimental, but uh, it does work. So this is a, uh, yeah, you have like an interface where you can pause it and forward and so on. You can also change the video resolution. It actually tries to change the resolution without you noticing it. And um, an interesting here, an interesting thing here is that uh, all these interfaces, so all these buttons and the resolution switching and trackbar and all this, nothing of this is like embedded on the viewer itself. So the viewer just gives you the primitives with which you can implement uh, an interface like this. But the implement the interface you can implement it whatever way you want, and uh, you can basically do whatever you want. Right? And this demo and uh, all the other demos that I'm showing are actually now on our website, on this demo section. And the source code is on GitHub. So you can go there and see how we, how we did this. And if you want to do it also, you can place yourself on that. So. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure yet if we already have like an API for making the hotspots move or not. But uh, if we don't, it's a simple thing to add. But yeah, in principle, they do work on video. OK, so um, with Marzipan, you can 
show these kind of media types. And Marsley Panel basically supports any tile URL scheme that you want. So we have here a demo, which uh, doesn't work so well without Wi-Fi. But here we are just basically displaying a flat image, which is a world map. And the tiles are being loaded directly from the Mapbox API. So you can just you can just use the URLs that Mapbox uses, and you can load the tiles directly from there. There is really no limitation on that. Um, but actually, media can also be loaded from sources which are not URLs. And we have already seen this before when I was using the Marzi Panel tool. These tiles, the image tiles, were not online. They were just stored on the browser memory. But with Marzi Panel, you can do this kind of stuff. So you can load things from basically any source. And you can implement new sources to load data from. And we have here a demo, which, uh, which is what it's basically doing, is that it's generating tiles on the fly. So uh, these tiles that you see here, they don't really exist as images, but they are being generated on the browser as they are needed. So uh, you can, in theory, you can zoom in infinitely, to, uh, and the image is always getting generated. Actually, this is an interesting demo because uh, you can see some limitations that you get when you zoom in a lot. <coughs> like, if you zoom really a lot, you start to have uh, numeric problems. And so if you go really, really, <laughs> if you zoom really a lot, like here we are already at a point where each, where each cube face would have 18 terapixel, which, uh, <laughs> well, I guess you won't hit so much. But when you get to about like one pepe pixel, you can see that as you zoom in, as you zoom in, it's like uh, wiggling a bit. And this is because of numerical problems during the calculations. It starts to go a bit crazy. It's already one exapixel. <laughs> and it will get to a point where it really, where it really breaks. Yeah, now it's real. <laughs> it's funny to get applauses when the viewer actually stops working. But <laughs> Okay, you can see there that that was already at like one tera tiles or something like that. So you have 70 tera tiles. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. But it's uh, funny to see. Okay, so I mean, and this kind of ex extensibility is following another one of our design principles, which is to really be as modular and as extensible as possible so that the developers can do whatever they think of. So um, it supports all major browsers and devices out there today. So there is a WebGL rendering mode for most modern browsers. And there are also fallbacks for CSS, 3D transforms, and Flash. So MarsyPen also supports hotspots. And one cool thing about the hotspots is that uh, hotspots are actually just HTML elements. So you can use any kind of CSS effects that, uh, that you want on them. <laughs> Thank you. So like you can do things like this with these CSS transitions, you know, like uh, having it appear like this. It's a nice one to uh, show some extra information. Like to show if you have regular photos on the tour. Another nice one. You can also have it like show a tooltip and then when you click on it, it shows more information. Are those options directly on the, on the, on the interface? Or Please no, ask for the microphone, otherwise we can't hear it on the video or anyone else. Thank you. Are those options already uh, built in in the interface or is something that you add in after that? And do you have documentation out of that? Yeah, I mean, this is something that you do after that. So basically the only thing that the Marzik panel does is that it puts an HTML element where you want it. And then this you can do just by coding some CSS or, or HTML. And I mean, there are literally hundreds or thousands of tutorials and examples of online of like buttons that you can use on websites and so. And the nice thing about using standard web technologies is that all that stuff you can use it on, on the tours also. So uh, there are a couple more. Yeah, just some other CSS transition theme thing. And this one is just using an existing library to show a very simple tooltip. So for this one, you don't even have to do any coding on the stuff. So we also, Marzipan also supports these embedded hotspots. These are those hotspots which have a perspective projection. So it looks like they are overlaid on the 360 image. And it's easier to show with an example. 
So this is an example. I, so you see like the map is always on the same part on the image. And the nice thing about this is that since these are HTML, this is just regular HTML, you can basically add any kind of widget that is out there. So you can put Google Maps on the panorama, or you can put like Facebook like buttons. If your customer wants to have his latest tweets, you can put a Twitter thing. And And another, I mean, another nice idea, it was actually Jehaj from Colorcast, is that, uh, I mean, if you want to like, monetize your, your tour, you can actually put Google AdSense on the panoramas, on the panoramas directly. <laughs> I was actually trying to get it in time for the demo here, but uh, Google AdSense has some approval process, and uh, I couldn't get it on time, but uh, you can. You might want to ask Google to. first about that. Yeah, yeah, I asked someone, but uh, it's a big company. <laughs> No, but I mean, I understand that there is this approval process. It, it makes sense. I just thought about it two days ago. So in fact, you have iframe what's slots. Yeah, exactly. It's just a regular HTML element, and it can be an iframe. You know, these kind of hotspots, uh, people very often use them to uh, play videos, like to put videos on the panoramas. And actually now, since this is just HTML, you can put a video off YouTube. You don't have to host the videos anymore. You can post it on, from YouTube or Vimeo, which is cool. You can even go a bit crazy and put a colorized video on the, on the panorama. So uh, <laughs> let's see if it works. Yeah, so you can have a 360 video on a 360 image if you want. <laughs> Not sure if this is useful, but, uh, <laughs> but it's funny. Or you can even put like a round me tour inside it. Also, I don't know if it makes much sense, but uh, if you want, you can do it. <laughs> all right. So, so MyZPen also supports all the standard control methods, mouse, touch, keyboard. And of course, it can also be extended with new control methods. And we have a, a demo where we implement the, the gyroscope control, so you can see how we did it. One interesting thing is that um, actually to <coughs> recognize the touch gestures, we are using an external library called Camera.js. This is another one of these design principles that we try to reuse existing technologies and libraries whenever possible, so long as it does not compromise the performance. And Camera.js is a really lean library and very lightweight, so we ended up doing it. And I mean, this saves us work of having to implement this, but it also has some nice side effects. For instance, you can actually add some extra interaction ways to interact with your with your tour. So there's this demo. I will show it first to you with the mouse, but then I'll show a video of it running on a tablet. So this is supposed to be like a panorama gallery, so you can look around, but you can actually move to the, also to the next one. So a bit more like a gallery than really a tour. And one thing we did here is that you can double click on a certain area to zoom in that area. Kind of thing. Another, another thing we implemented here using the Hammer.js is that you can swipe with two fingers to change panorama, and uh, you'll see that up there on the video. And finally, what you can do is that you can press at a certain area of the panorama to add a comment. So like if I click here for two seconds, I get something. And then you get a comment added there. So it's nice to be able to add these things. I'll just show it running on, on the tablet because it's more interesting. So you can look around. By pen. So is your bigger nails? So now you can double tap to uh, you can double tap to zoom in like that. Swipe with the two fingers to change panorama. <laughs> and I hope you, there was already a comment there that you can just tap to add another one. And just write a nice message. And yeah, and then the comment is there. <laughs> So this is nice because this gives you a lot of flexibility to implement new ways to interact with, with the tool. So you might have seen it on this last demo. 
that uh, the transition here was a bit different than the, the one that was on the tour we created with the tool. So with the tool, it was basically blending the two panoramas together. And here, the panorama is coming from the side. So I'd like to tell you a bit more about these transitions. But before, I have to tell you about another feature, which are layers. And now this is getting a bit into the low-level details of how the viewer works. And for most use cases, you don't really need this, or this isn't really useful. But uh, if you are like trying to create something more special, or creating some application using Marzipano, this might, might be interesting. So Marzipano works with layers, so a bit like Photoshop or so. So on this demo here, we can actually have an accurate rectangular image from, uh, from the hard drive to display it. So uh, just this one. There it goes. Now I can add another one. When I add another one, what's happening is that uh, the two layers are actually being displayed on top of each other. So I can come on the top one and change its transparency, and the bottom layer will show below it. So, and this is basically how we implemented this first transition you saw. We just add a new layer, which is completely transparent. And then, with the time, you just increase the transparency until the other one is blocked, and then you remove the old layer. Besides changing the transparency, you can also change the position and the size of the layers. So I can, act I can actually make this smaller. This happens. And you have to change its position also. So I don't know, if someone finds a good use for this, you can, <laughs> you can let me know also. But it's funny, I think. Do you have an option to have uh, maybe like a daytime and nighttime thing, so you can click and it switches the same position but at a different time maybe the day? Uh, yeah, this is just having two, this is just having the two panoramas and just blending them together also. Yeah. So I mean, using this thing of changing the position and the size is how we implemented the second transition you saw. So if I just put this back where it was. Oh. You could fairly easily integrate uh, Hold on. stereo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, do you intend to do that? Oh uh, yeah, I will show it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is another thing that you can do with these layers, just <laughs> side by side rendering, that's really trivial. So the second transition was just we just moved it to the side and then make it appear from there. Really simple. Finally, another thing you can do with these layers is to do color transformations. So this is using a color transformation matrix. I won't really go much into the technical details. But you can do things like yeah, increase the red channel. Uh, you can change the green and blue channel if you want. You want the matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do this kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. We also have some useful presets here. so. You can use this to change the image's brightness, for instance. You can do like the sepia filter, desaturate and saturate the images. So there are quite a few transformations you could, that you can do using these, uh, these matrix. OK, so that's how layers work. And basically, the way transitions work is just uh, the only thing that the viewer does is that if you give the viewer a function of what it should do during the transition time, and it just does it. So, uh, I mean, the viewer doesn't know anything about these different kinds of transitions. This is all done outside the viewer itself. So on this demo, we have a few different ones that we tried. So this is the default one. This is coming from the side with the constant speed. But actually, you can make it slow down a bit in the end to be a bit more smooth. You can also do a bit more crazy stuff, like make it swing like that, or make it appear from the center. A bit in your face, this one. You can make it like and from the top with opacity. This one I really like. It's like bouncing. Like <laughs> I think I'll never be able to use this anywhere, but uh, it's pretty fun. This is also just going like that. This is similar to the other one, but coming from the bottom first. And you can actually also do transitions with the color transformations. So, like, you can fade it to black and then make the other one appear. Or you can do like the man in black kind of thing and just flash and make, and make the other panorama up here. It's a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit aggressive for the viewer. But, uh, yeah, on this demo you can actually try it out here. You have your different kinds of transformations and different 
easing functions. You can also change the time and yeah, you can try also different kinds of things. And so this is really giving, this gives the developer a lot of flexibility on how transition should work. It uh, can really do basically anything. So with these layers, you can also do some funny things. Uh, you know, Willy Kaimina has these uh, trained photos where he has photoshopped out the windows to change the background. And uh, I was wondering what we could do with this, with this layer stuff. So we, we were doing some demos. This is what we do. So thanks to Willy for the photo. So I mean, this is just one layer, which has some parts which are transparent. And below it, you have another layer, which is a photo of the night sky. And it has an auto rotation. So, I mean, and you don't have to do anything special on the viewer for this. It's just, uh, it's just we just implemented this generic mechanism, and you can use it for a lot of things. For sure, all your clients will be interested in this. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is another funny demo. So actually, when we were implementing video, we were thinking about, so what's a video? And a video is just an image which is changing. And so we were thinking if there were any other use cases for images we change. And the best thing we could come up with is an image that you edit. So you can see this on this demo. So here you have the same image. And it's being displayed on a layer. And over there you display the same image, but desaturated. So now you are just seeing the top the top layer. And on this demo, what we did is that we added like a brush tool, which added the alpha channel of the top image. So it will make this black and white image transparent. And when it does that, it will reveal the, the image below it. So you can have like a little panorama editor on the browser. And you could implement other kinds of tools, like you could implement really a brush and a clone tool and stuff like that. This has a big stitching error here because it's a it's a tail shot, but I'll just make a few of these. So Manuel, sorry, yeah. I got a question. Um, Where? Yeah, sorry, I'm here. Ah, yeah, yeah. I got a question. Uh, when you paint, can you can you uh, save the result? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was going to show that afterwards. So if you click on this export button, so we can have one million kids yeah. painting, posting on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. probably, I think you won't want to implement the whole Photoshop on the browser, because it will be a lot of work. But like, if you want to have an application where the users can do this kind of editing, where the whole image is desaturated except a little part, this is possible to do using using Marzi panel. And you can export it, and here you have the new rectangular, which is <coughs> the result of your editing. Yeah, great. I have a question for Luke as well. Did you get your answer? <laughs> Okay. Ah, another nice thing. I don't know if Thomas Sharpless is here. He's in the lobby. No. Ah, no. What a shame. So this is using a photo that Thomas Sharpless sent me. So Thomas sent me this, uh, this stereo panorama. So have you the, the stereo panorama. It's just uh, one regular panorama for the left eye and one for the right eye. This is one of the tiles. And actually using these layers, what you can do is that you can apply a color transformation to each of the images, and then you can change the way in which the layers are blended. And using this, you can create these uh, red cyan images directly on the viewer, so you don't have to pre-process it or something. You can just put the color images there, and yeah, you can try different kinds of uh, ways to do it, because there are different formulas. I'm sure you will know a lot more about this than me. So yeah, it uh, can be a nice... Uh, a nice thing. This is actually a thing that when we were developing the viewer, I haven't really thought of this use case. But uh, one day I was seeing one of these images and I thought, oh, wait, we could, we could probably implement this there. And since the, the API from the viewer is so generic, you can do this kind of stuff. And as you were asking before, of course, with this you can do very easily side-by-side -side rendering for VR. And we also support this, that you can change the projection center because you need to do this because of the distance and so. So it's a very generic mechanism. So, so this brings us to VR. And uh, we haven't had much time to uh, get VR working really well, actually. But uh, actually, the, the viewer already implements all the primitives that you need for VR support, I think. 
and most of the work that's needed is actually outside the viewer. So we have like a, here a proof of concept demo, which, uses, which is using a library called the WebVR Polyfill, which we didn't develop it ourselves, it was someone else. And basically what it does is that it emulates the WebVR API, which is a browser API to support VR. And so I mean, this is, this is working on the Google Cardboard with, a, with the gyroscope from the smartphone, but it doesn't really have a, I mean, it doesn't detect on which smartphone you are and which device so that it adjusts the parameters correctly. So now it's still very rough, it needs more work done. But we are planning to do this. Or uh, we are hoping that someone will do it, maybe, because actually this is not something specific to the viewer. This is something that any web application which supports VR will need. So uh, maybe someone will solve the problem before us, I don't know. But, uh, but so, I mean, Probably in the next couple of months, there will be a full VR support, a demo with full VR support for, for Marsi Panel. So a few notes about performance. I mean, we we're trying really hard to uh, make the performance as good as possible, using a lot of JavaScript tricks to do it. And of course, having good performance also means trying to keep the size low so that it loads fast. And Marsi Panel currently is around 50 kilobytes when it's gzipped, which is uh, quite reasonable. Um, for the developers in the room, we try to make it really as developer friendly as possible. So we use standard web technologies and encourage the, user, the developer to use them. And Marzi Panel can be used with uh, modern web development tools such as Browserify and stuff like that. We really try to make the viewer do as little as possible, uh, but allow the developer to extend it with, with new features. And as I was saying before, we have these demos on our site and the source code on GitHub for the demos. And there is also documentation. And if you still need some help on how to do something, you can just send us an email also and we'll be happy to help. So the stuff we want to do in the future, well, I think the main feature we are missing is having more projections. Like for instance, stereographic for this little planet effect. We have actually had stereographic working for accurate rectangular images but not for multi-resolution cubes, so we didn't really include the feature yet. We'd like to have more effects on these layers, like for instance motion blur, so then you could do this kind of Google Street View kind of transitions, where you are just blurring from one image to the other. Um, I mean, the tool, as I was saying before, we want, to, we want to keep the tool really simple, but there are a couple of features we would like to have, like. Uh, automatically align the images from exif data, like the little data shots, which are not that well aligned. And also allow you to add another image, so when you have the hole, something to cover the hole. And also thumbnails, so we have a thumbnail for each panorama. We'd also like to experiment a bit with depth maps and 3D to see uh, what this viewer allows one to do. So if you have any project in this area and need a web viewer, just uh, let us know. It will be interesting to hear about it. And of course, there are still things we want to do to improve in the API. So just a small note about the Marsi Panel tool. I already talked about this a bit earlier. So this is processing the panoramas on the browser in JavaScript. And this is using really recent web technologies. Currently, it requires either Chrome or Firefox. Actually, Safari can actually process the panoramas pretty fast. But Safari doesn't have a way to generate the zip file in the end, so we can't really support it. Internet Explorer 11 runs really slow, like 10 times slower as Chrome or Firefox. But actually, uh, I think the Explorer team is working on the new version, Edge, and they are implementing the ASM.js support. So I think maybe this, on this Edge, it will, uh, it will be quite fast, but we will test it when it comes out. And I mean, the technology which is behind the tool can also be useful for other applications. For instance, if you have a web platform where people can upload their panoramas, the way you do it usually is that the person uploads a big image and it gets uploaded to the server and then it's processed on the server. And of course, this requires resources. But I mean, if you were to use the, the technology that the Marsley Panel tool uses, you could actually do all the processing on the browser and then just upload the tiles to your storage service or even directly to Amazon S3. So when this has the potential for saving some resources. So regarding licensing, we are still not sure what we will do about licensing, actually. But uh, it's free for non-commercial use. 
And currently, it's also free for virtual tour projects. So if you want to make like, a tour with it, you just have to send us like a small description of the project, like saying how many panoramas it is. And we will send you a version without watermark, and you can use it completely free of charge. Uh, if you want to use it on more complex If you want to use it on more complex applications, then uh, just uh, send us an email and uh, we'll discuss some arrangement. So, we have the Marzi Panel Viewer, which is a, just a library to display 360 media. And we have the Marzi Panel Tool, which is something like to get started using the Marzi Panel Viewer easily. The tool that you get, you can customize it just using standard web development languages. And the viewer is lightweight and performant, and it supports all major browsers and devices. So you can use it today. I mean, we're starting to use it on our projects, which is really cool, because then we are improving it on our projects. And uh, we also improve the viewer as, as we develop it. So thanks. <laughs> I understand why you think he gave me the answer. You be way too long to explain all these features. Yeah, so great work, uh, Manuel.